This is a 60 years old female patient having an eyelash uh, which accidentally entered in the eye 20 years ago, uh, but uh, the patient was not bothered by its presence in the eye until recently when she experienced a significant loss of uh, visual acuity and came uh, uh, seeking for help. At Sleet Lab, she presented with diffuse corneal edema with stromal haze, um, dense uh, decimate folds, uh, nail vessels in the inferior part of the cornea, and the presence of the eyelash in the superior part of the cornea, which we thought it was stuck in the stroma, but the UBM and the OCT showed that it was not in the stroma, but was free in the anterior chamber, uh, which uh, would allow us for um, abiternal withdrawal of the eyelash during a lamellar procedure. The patient also have an advanced cataract in uh, which was more visible on dilated pupil, so she needed uh, combined cataract extraction and keratoplasty. Uh, but what type of keratoplasty and what type of um, cataract removal technique would have been better for this patient? Um, of course, we thought first of DMAC uh, or Altafin DSEC, uh, which are known for uh, their advantage. Um, uh, but we were afraid, first of all, um, uh, of the neo vessels, uh, which were in the stroma. We also were afraid of uh, the stromal haze, which was, was quite dense. Will it disappear? Will it go away after the lamella procedure? And in the same time, uh, we thought about the FACO procedure, which uh, would have been done quite difficult in these poor uh, visualization uh, conditions. On the other hand, um, penetrating keratoplasty has its uh, well-known uh, drawbacks. So uh, at the end, we, we decided for a DSEC uh, procedure. Uh, the patient had previously, three days before the surgery, she uh, had done um, an uh, avastin in, um, injection uh, for that those neo vessels on the table we noticed very poor visualization um, before and after epithelial removal as well and uh, we said, okay, we'll perform the sec with FACO. The standard technique is uh, to perform first the decimetorexis um, under air and then uh, proceed with the FACO. But in this case, the visualization was that poor and I was afraid of uh, constricting the pupil uh, during the decimetorexis, which happened quite uh, often. So I said, uh, no, in this case, I shall start with the FACO first. Um, let's do it on uh, as a standard procedure under OVD, and then we will see uh, what the things will look and what we will decide for the cornea itself. So um, we stained the um, uh, anterior capsule and we performed the CCC, which went uh, very well uh, with uh, no problem despite the poor visualization conditions. Then uh, under this OVD, we easily extracted the, the eyelash, uh, which was not stuck in the corneal stroma, as we assumed um, before the surgery. So it was very easy to be uh, withdrawn. And then uh, we started the FACO itself. The standard technique is the CHOP technique. But it was very difficult because uh, most of the surgery, uh, the, the FACO tip and the CHOP itself and most of the um, maneuvers are done um, in the inferior part of the, of the lens and that was exactly the place where the cornea was, um, had uh, more edema and uh, lack of transparency was mostly in the inferior part of the cornea. Uh, but I managed to perform uh, an uneventful fake emulsification, which went quite well and quite uh, fast. Um, I managed to emulsify the whole nucleus and to remove the, the pieces, the nucleus pieces, the fragments, and uh, afterwards the um, uh, complete um, uh, cortex. And this is how it looks, um, uh, the, the eye looked uh, at the end of eye commercification. At this point, um, uh, uh, I decided to postpone the IOL implantation because for that I would have needed a larger incision. And then it was, uh, it would be, have been more difficult to, uh, make the decimetorexis and decimet removal on the air. Uh, so I said, uh, first I'll do the um, decimet removal, uh, having only small, the two small paracentesis. So it's easier to perform it on the air because at this point I really don't want to have any more, any OVD in the arterial chamber. And I managed, managed to, 
uh, to completely withdraw it. Um, of course, the dye was helpful because it stained also the disemet membrane. And uh, after complete removal of the disemet on the air, I enlarged the nasal paracentesis at 3 millimeters and inject the IOL under BSS, under irrigation cannula. So it was a hydro implantation, uh, a successful hydro implantation. The IOL went very well directly in the, in the bag and centered very well. Then I inject uh, my call to put the pupil, pupil down and um, prepare for the peripheral iridotomy at 6 o'clock using a reversed uh, Sienski hook. Uh, of course, the iridotomy should be done as peripheral as uh, possible. And then I continue with the standard uh, DSEC uh, procedure. It was an uh, ultra-thin DSEC lamella prepared in the OR using artificial interior chamber and microkeraton. Uh, it was injected very easily on the 3 millimeter incision, then air under the, the, the lamella, and at the end of surgery, the, the eye was a bit hypertonic at about 30 millimeters. The first day, the eye looked very, very nice. I was very happy. A thin lamella, transparent, uh, completely attached to the cornea. You can barely see the neo vessels, the, the corneal, the stromal haze looked uh, quite um, diminished. But the second and the third day, the eye was much more inflamed. Uh, the vessels were there, more, thicker, much thicker, and the um, stromal haze uh, more developed. Um, this went away very, very uh, slowly. At one week, uh, the um, vessels were still there, the uh, stromal haze was still there and quite important, but at one month uh, post-op, um, they started to uh, to diminish significantly. At three months post-op, um, it was only a thin um, pigment area at the limit of the graft, and the uh, stroma became more transparent. But at six months post-op, lo- the eye looked perfectly, and the patient uh, saw uh, 0.9. So both the surgeon and the patient were very happy. Thank you.